Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hornet King channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to be removing a large, no, massive bald-faced hornet nest. Um, this was right off the end of the customer's driveway and they had little kids and they, these guys started getting really, really active and uh, as you can tell by the video and it, it was time for it to go. Um, this was basically a full-term nest and it was going to start having reproductives come out soon. Um, so I started my usual. Um, this is actually kind of nestled up in between a bunch of uh, evergreen bushes. And uh, so I was able to find a sweet spot for the camera and um, kind of stood off to the side. And I tell you what, these guys had no problems with me whatsoever since I was kind of nestled in with the foliage. Um, they weren't too concerned when they were flying back. There was just so much like paraphernalia around the nest that like my the nozzle my hose being there or nozzle my vacuum didn't seem to bother them all that much which was great because they weren't swarming or anything so at this point there was a significant amount of adults and they were just, just pouring out of the inside and going right into the vacuum for the most part um, I did speed this section up because I mean you guys have seen me vacuum over and over and over again and um, though about 5% of you ask for more vacuuming the majority of uh, my viewers are kind of uh, happy for me to just kind of skip through it. So this is the usual process. I put just a couple drops of Dawn dish soap in the bottom of my vacuum. Literally just a couple. I don't need you don't need all that much. Um, oh, thank you for snipping that. That was driving me nuts. Um, <laughs> but I put a couple couple drops of uh, dish soap. It can be any dish soap. It doesn't have to be Dawn specifically. It can be. I've even used uh, laundry detergent. I mean, just any kind of soapy material substance to go in the water at the bottom of the vacuum. Then I mix in a little bit of uh, water, which is usually about two inches at the bottom of the bucket, and um, which is usually like maybe less than a half gallon of water. And uh, I have my my uh, black flag flying insect spray with me just in case there's a swarm, which I hardly ever use it for bald-faced hornets. Um, usually just a little bit at the end once I remove the whole nest if there's just a couple foragers that come back I was at this particular spot I was sitting here for probably about 45 minutes to a, you know an hour vacuuming up give a little rat tat on the top just to get them to, to shimmy out um, at this point it was just foragers coming back there weren't very many coming out of the actual nest um, so as I suck them up the the ones that go into the vacuum they die um, very soon after. If they haven't died by getting sucked up, they die in the soapy water. Um, there's no good way to kill something, and this is one of the better ways to do it because it's kind of quicker. So once I get most of them sucked up, I, uh, I even though I'm not relocating this nest, I was going to be just take just take a bag and just kind of cover it over. So any adults that are still left in the bag or left in the nest um, don't come flying out in my bin. Um, so I put them in a bag, and I did want to keep this nest intact. Uh, I just wanted to keep the nest in general. And um, so putting it in this bag kind of allows me to remove it with potential adults still inside while um, keeping it whole. So whether or not I cut it open later on or whatever, um, at least I, I have the ability to do that without, uh, without having a damaged nest to start with. As you can see, there was a couple foragers coming back, and there's just, I mean, again, they're not swarming. There's no pheromone response or alarm uh, pheromone set off, so they're just kind of just floating around. So I wanted to give you guys something to, to put a visual to the stories that I tell about how these guys build their nests. So this is a, an adult chewing on the side of a post uh, at my grapevine, and in its mouth there you can see the cellulose that they've chewed off that post and she's gonna go hover back me what a money shot she's gonna fly back to the nest with that um, little bit of cellulose and saliva to lay that on onto the nest itself so there's an adult here it's gonna be flying down right there so she's looking for the perfect spot to start chewing so she'll go to this post and she'll just chew on it I mean I've, I was watching her I think for about 20 minutes and just to give you guys an idea, she'll spend about 20 minutes here just chewing away 
at the wood, the surface of the wood. And typically, they aim for wood that's kind of starting to decay, where it has like a grayish hue to it. This whole post was gray at the beginning of the season, and now it's it's, it's back to like a wood color because these hornets, or yellow jackets technically, have chewed off the surface cellulose off these posts. So she'll sit here and she'll chew and chew and chew, and the, eventually you'll start to see right underneath her, behind her mandibles, like if you were to call it a chin, underneath her chin, you'll start to see a ball, black ball, start to form. And what that black ball is, is like kind of a putty of cellulose, which is from the wood, and her saliva mixed together into like a paste. And this is, I mean, these are some pretty, in my opinion, some great shots. I was really, really happy with these shots of getting her, I mean, just going to town. Look how busy and, and hard she's working to get this paper um, to lay on the nest. It's not paper yet. It's like a paste. Um, she'll turn it into paper. So she just chews and chews. And now you can see like right, up, right where her, the top of her head is. See how that tan, that, that wood is? That's from her chewing. And the, the gray stuff is what could be chewed yet. So that's what she's going to be going for. Look, look, there's the ball of, of uh, cellulose right there at the bottom of her mandibles. Look at that. Look how big that is. And she'll just keep doing this and doing this until she gets it to where it's, it's, it's too much for her anymore. She can't, um, she can't possibly add any more to the pile or to the ball. And then she flies back to the nest. But also, also a good thing to look at here are the hooks on her feet. So people ask while I'm, um, why when I vacuum these nests out, how come I'm, I don't have a stronger vacuum? My vacuum is plenty strong for what I do. What I'm not doing is sucking them off the nest or out of the nest. I'm merely sucking them as they're flying, as they're either once they take off and they're mid-flight or they're landing and still mid-flight. Once they land on the nest, the hooks on their feet, it's like virtually impossible to just like suck them out unless you have like a super heavy-duty vacuum, like way overkill. It's not necessary. Getting them while they're flying is how I do it. So. When people ask, why don't you need it, or tell me you need a stronger vacuum. No, you just need to understand how I'm doing it. So, but look how big that ball is getting there in her mandibles. I mean, it's just ginormous. And yes, I did go back to the nest and watch this particular wasp lay this ball, which is freaking awesome. So, get a little slow motion shot here of just watching her kind of adjust it in her mandibles. And then she gets ready and she climbs up and she flies off with it. And then I chase her over to the nest, which is only like 10 yards down that post line. Because this is my grapevine here. And there she is, laying that big chunk. So what she does first, and you'll see it later on in the video, um, a different wasp doing it. So what she'll do is she'll go and she'll kind of map out where she wants to lay it. And then she takes that ball and kind of holds it with her front legs while munching it and pressing it onto the edge of the paper that's already there. And it just makes like a black line, but it's clumpy. And then she goes back over, like right now she's going back over and just pressing it with her mandibles to flatten it out like a rolling pin with cookie dough. And she's just mashing it, almost like if you take your hands in like the prayer position and just mush it. And she's just mushing that stuff out till it's flat. So right now it's wet, so that's why it looks dark and it's almost kind of floppy. Um, but then once it dries, it dries like paper. And you can see in some of these other layers here, these other stripes is, is like a grainy, fabric-y looking, and that's that's the cellulose. So this one hanging upside down like a bat, she's laying a little bit of paper, mat, you know, munching it up. Um, the two on the left, top and bottom, they're fanning the nest, so they're actually blowing some some air inside these um, this this type of wasp, this yellow jacket or bald-faced hornet, is very sensitive to um, to temperature increase, and they're thermoregulating either by the nest itself, by all the layers of envelope, or the fact that they will then go, they'll sense that temperature increase and they'll go out and they'll fan the hole, and that's just mainly just to get air circulating inside. I'm not sure what this one is. It's like biting on the back of the other one. I'm not sure why she's doing that, but 
that one just kind of like nonchalantly and they just nonchalantly walking out and just flying off like <laughs> like people weren't just munching on her back I did leave a good few um, shots of them uh, flying in and out of the nest because I just want to show how busy this nest is and this is the one these are the two nests that I relocated look how big these nests have gotten it's just incredible I mean they are just they've just been going to town on this if you guys haven't seen those videos check them out I'll put a tab in here um, at the top right of the screen and you guys can click on that to go and see the relocation and the updates on this uh, particular nest because this nest was relocated to this point I relocated it two different nests to the same location and the, the adults you're seeing here are actually not family they're I don't know which ones are which, but there's two different families here from two different queens, two different lineages. So at one point here in the bottom right of the hole, you're going to see an adult come out with a big glob in her mouth, and then she's going to start laying that glob onto the right of the nest. See, when they come back with the, with the, here she's right here to the right. So when they come back to the nest with that glob, they go in the hole and then they come back out with the glob to lay down for this paper. So she'll come down to the bottom right of the screen. Nice zoom in shot. So you'll see here, it's just a, it's just like a big burr. It's like a big glob. And she'll just kind of start pressing that onto the edge of the existing paper that's already dry. So while she's kind of laying that on there, if you look at the nest and you see here the different colorations, the light white colors, the, the, the darker gray, the lighter gray, the tan, each one of those lines represents one wasp doing exactly what this one is doing right now. And this entire nest is built strip by strip, stripe by stripe, one wasp at a time going out and foraging for 20 minutes, chewing on the side of the thing like you saw earlier, and then coming back to the nest and doing this for about another 15 minutes or so, and just making one little tiny strip. And that entire nest that's the size of a frickin' beach ball is made this way. Not to mention the comb, not to mention laying all the eggs, not to mention going and finding food. All of this is done one wasp at a time and that to me is just incredible and you can see like the like these guys coming out here all these I'm sorry girls coming out of here they just they you can tell they have a thought they have a purpose they they know what they're doing it's like you see the intelligence in these guys and even like when I walk up and I'm getting these shots and I'm filming these shots they come out and they look at me like they, I mean you can see that there's like gears turning like they're looking at me and like Okay, are you you know you're gonna leave soon, or you know you're not getting closer? And they give me warning wings, which is where they kind of set their wings up at a high V, and that usually means they're about to fly at me. Just read their language. See, this one's got a big ball in its mouth and its mandibles, and it's gonna start laying some paper. Now, see, this is where the other one was laying, and uh, that spot's now dry because this was maybe I don't know a half hour after that one had already laid. So you get to see this one laying another layer, another stripe. Again, just incredible that they will come back to each spot and they know, okay, well, this is the spot we're working on. We're going to keep building this, building this, building this. While I had my camera sitting here for about an hour, that, this was the spot that they kept focusing on. There was two different spots, but this one that I had the camera aimed at, this is where the they kept coming back to. Now I can't say that this is the same wasp as the one from the previous shot, but it's at least one that, that knows that this has been recently built on and needs to keep going. So she kind of like lay like a, a small ribbon of that ball and then she'll go back over it from the very beginning where she started and then mush it with her mandibles and press it and she'll do that back and forth, back and forth, until it's flat and thin enough. However, she measures that, and then she's then she's done. She leaves it alone. So this is after she's gone back over it another time. 
And for those of you viewers that are not watching her build that and we're watching the ones flying in and out, it's kind of why I left that in the shot. So there's something for everybody here. <laughs> if you don't care to watch her lay the paper, at least you can see a lot of activity flying in and out of this nest because this nest is busy. Busy as a wasp. It looks so funny because in this shot it looks like that, that piece of ribbon that she's laying is so big and it's probably less than an eighth of an inch thick or wide, I should say. And it, to me it just blows my mind that, that the amount of working hours that these guys, these girls, have to keep sustaining to build this nest to the size that it is. I mean, yeah, of course there's probably about 500 of them in this nest maybe even more since it's, t it's a dual nest but still that's I mean one of those workers is a hard hard worker so I just wanted to kind of give a quick shot of how busy this nest is and this this little shot this clip that I put in here shows it they just start pouring out of this thing I and not not because they're bothered you know they got five wasps on the outside fanning it and then it's just pouring, look at that, just pouring out one at a time, two at a time, five at a time. And then as ones are trying to come back in. And then this is the outside of the nest. Look how big this thing is. This thing is just ginormous. So this is kind of even a little bit of an update for this uh, for the flat nest. So I wouldn't want to uh, keep my girls away from you, or vice versa. So... This is um, this is some comb, some some bald faced hornet comb. One of the removals I did this week, and um, figured I would include that. Just a shot of me giving the nest to them. A lot of times in the comments of the when I'm tweezing the larva out, I get like half of the comments are, "Why don't you just give the nest to the chickens to to pluck out because they have a great tweezer as a beak?" Yes. I give a lot of my nest directly to the to the chickens. If you see my driveway when these guys are done, it is like a battle zone. They, see, they're, they're full nest now, but when they're done, it's nothing but just looks like confetti all over the driveway. And they they rip it up, they, they'll chew it, for, or they'll peck at it for a while, and then they leave and go lay down, and then they come back over, and then they peck at it again, and scrape at it with their, with their feet and their talons, and... <clears throat> By the time they're like fully done with this, I mean there's like there's carcasses everywhere. There's um, there's larvae that are still stuck in some of the little pieces in the comb. There's flies everywhere. So I usually don't I don't really like to leave them to just peck away at the nest for that reason for the most part. They do get a lot of the the, the larvae. I will give them that, but. Um, for the rest of the day, it just looks like, I mean, it, it starts to smell and everything. Um, but by the nighttime, there's a local skunk that comes by. If you guys haven't seen the skunk take care of a nest, I have a video, um, two videos ago, two posts ago, of a, of a skunk tearing up a nest. It was actually a European corn nest. Um, but anyhow, there's a local skunk near here, near my, near my house, that, um, that comes by and, and will pretty much clean up the mess. And primarily, if it's a if it's a full nest, full comb, it'll almost look like that comb never was never there. Like there's no remnants of it whatsoever. But if there's like this stuff, these like shredded nests and things from the chickens, then there's there's less of a cleanup. It's more of just they'll they'll carry away the chunk pieces. So there's still some adults hatching on here, as you can see. And I had a neighbor friend pull in while I was trying to film this. <laughs> I was a bit, not begrudging him, but just was trying to get a good shot of the girls eating away. Angel's getting a little rupid because she doesn't like it when I touch the nest after I give them to her. So her tail gets really high and she starts kind of getting a little bit agitated. <laughs> she usually pecks my hand. Anyhow, guys, this is uh, this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of these uh, intimate shots of the uh, the nest being built and how the um, the bald-faced hornets go out and collect their cellulose to to uh, build the, their paper and their envelope.
If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you guys are returning subscribers, I appreciate you guys coming back and supporting my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I have new content coming out all the time. And uh, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.